Welcome to SSH protocol lesson. As you may know, SSH is a secure replacement for Telnet. Since any data that is uh, transmitted through Telnet protocol, including user credential, is in a clear text format, Telnet is not secure. That's why we use SSH. So SSH encrypts everything and sends it from client to server. And that's the reason that SSH is more secure and uh, should be used when a client communicates with a server or remote logins to a server. SSH comprises three protocols that run on top of TCP protocol. First, we have transport layer protocol that provides server authentication and data confidentiality. Second is user authentication protocol that authenticates user. And third is connection protocol that multiplexes multiple logical communication channels over a single SSH connection. In other words, there isn't only one logical connection between a client and server that everything goes through that logical connection. Instead, there are multiple channels created. For example, one channel is for session, another one is for port forwarding, and so on. Let's go through these uh, steps involved in establishing an SSH connection between a client to server to find out how things work. I've also run PuTTY and SSH from my computer to one of my Linux machine and captured the exchange packets uh, using Wireshark. So that as we go through these steps, I'm going to show you those packets to see the content of each packet. Now, as I mentioned in earlier slide, SSH runs on top of a TCP protocol. And the request starts from client uh, requesting to communicate with server. So here are the TCP handshake uh, that we have SYN, CNAC, and ACK packets that are exchanged between the client and server to establish that TCP uh, connection. As soon as the connection is established, the first step of SSH is called identification string exchange. So here client constructs a packet in this format, SSH protocol version and software version, and send that to the server. Then the server responds back with uh, its own identification string message. Now, if you look at our captured packets in Wireshark, here you can see the uh, SSH protocol that I mentioned. The source is my machine 10.40.40.50, and my Linux machine is on 64.120.50.10. So if we go down here and uh, open this SSH protocol, here you can see that identification string exchange. We have SSH-2.0, which is the protocol version. The software that is used is PuTTY, and that's release 0.73. So that's the identification string that was sent from client. And if you look at the one that was sent from server, is uh, it's in the same format. We have SSH and then uh, the protocol version, which in this case is 2.0 again. And then the software and version. And the software on the server is OpenSSH version 7.1. Now, next step is algorithm negotiation. That means both client and server will negotiate to come up with key exchange, encryption, message authentication code, and compression algorithms. The client sends a key exchange initialization message where it tells the server about its supported algorithms. The algorithms on the client list are sorted in order of preference. So the most top algorithm on the list is the most preferred one by the client. Then the server responds back with the same key exchange initialization message, telling the client about the list of uh, supported algorithms. Now, since this is pretty much done at the same time, both client and server are guessing these algorithms. So if both have come up with the same algorithm after the exchange of these messages, then they move forward to the next step. Otherwise, the server picks the first algorithm on the client list if it is supported by itself. If both sides cannot come up with the same algorithm, 
then the connection fails and both disconnect. So the client cannot SSH to the server. Now, here is that step on Wireshark. Here you can see key exchange initialization. And if I go down here, SSH version 2, you can see the first algorithm on the list of client. That's AS256, that's AS symmetric algorithm. And then we have HMAC SHA2, and then compression method is none. But if I open this, and then down here, key exchange, and here is the algorithms, you can see these are the list of algorithms that are supported by client and this is the one that is sent to the server. Now, if you look at the server's list, you can see here that these are this is the, the algorithm, the first preferred algorithm on the server's list. And you can see here the list of algorithms that are supported by server. Now, if everything goes well and both agree on the same set of algorithms, then they enter the next step, which is a key exchange phase. Now, in this phase, both systems uh, use a key exchange algorithm, such as Diffie-Hellman algorithm, or in our case, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman to calculate a secret key. Now, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman is another powerful version of Diffie-Hellman. Elliptic curve is the set of points that satisfy a specific mathematical equation. So in simple words, the key values that are used as input to your Diffie-Hellman algorithm are some points on that curve. If you don't remember or don't know how Diffie-Hellman works, please refer to my Diffie-Hellman video to get a better understanding of the concept. So the process begins by the client generating an ephemeral key pair. One is private that remains with the client, and the second one, which is a public key, will be sent to the server in a message called SSH message key exchange elliptical Diffie-Hellman initialization. Now, I just want to emphasize that the public private key pair that I mentioned here are uh, for Diffie-Hellman key calculation. If you look at Wireshark here, you can see uh, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange initialization. It's uh, started uh, from client and down here in uh, under this SSH protocol, you can see this key exchange. And uh, here I have ECDH, that ellip that's elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman client's ephemeral public key length. And this is the public key it itself. So this is the one that is sent to the server. Now the server has been waiting for this uh, message and as soon as it receives it, it generates its own pair of ephemeral public and private keys and then uses these keys plus the public key that it received from client in its elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman algorithm to calculate a secret key. The second thing that the server is going to compute is called an exchange hash. So first, let's see how the hash is generated, and then I'll explain why we need that. Now, to generate the hash, the server is going to use a hashing algorithm that both client and server agreed on. So in this case, uh, they both agreed on a SHA-2 algorithm. So here are the inputs to this hash. We have client's identification string. Remember, this is the one that the uh, earlier client sent to the server when the client wanted to establish its SSH uh, communication. That's the first input to hash. Then we have server's identification string. Then after that, we have the payload of the client's key exchange initialization. That will be another input to this uh, hashing algorithm. Then we have the payload of the server's uh, key exchange initialization message. The server also has a pair of public and private keys. These keys are different from the one that uh, we use in Diffie-Hellman. These are the host keys that the server uses in asymmetric algorithms, um, uh, such as digital signature and digital certificates. Now the server's public key is also an input to the hash computation. Then we have client's ephemeral public key. This is the one that the client earlier sent to the server to be used in Diffie-Hellman key calculation. 
Then we have a server's ephemeral public key. Again, this key is the one that the server uses in Diffie-Hellman key calculation. And last but not least is the shared secret key. After creating the hash, the server uses its private key to encrypt or sign the hash. Now, the server creates the hash to prove few things to the client. First, since the hash has the shared secret key, which was generated through Diffie-Hellman algorithm, it proves that the server was able to generate this key based on the value that the client had sent earlier. The hash is also signed by the server. So the server is authenticating itself to the client. And it's a proof of the possession of the private key, meaning if the client can decrypt the message with the server's public key, that means the message was encrypted with the server's private key. And the hash also serves as the session identifier in each key exchange phase. So that's the reason that the server creates this hash out of those values that I just showed you. Then the server constructs a message called SSH message key exchange of elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman reply. Then it adds the exchange hash, the host public key, and the public key generated for Diffie-Hellman algorithm to this message, and then send that to the client. Now here, this step in Wireshark looks like this. So this is the message that was sent from the server to the client. You can see elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange reply. And uh, let me close these two and we just need this one. So we have SSH version two as protocol here and that's the key exchange. And here's the message code, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange reply. And these are the values that have been sent to the client. We have key exchange host key. So this is basically the public key of the server that has been sent to the client. Then we have ECDH, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman server's ephemeral public key. So that's the public key uh, for Diffie-Hellman key calculation that the server is sending to client. And down here we have key exchange hash that has been signed by the server and all of these three are sent to the client as part of this elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange uh, message. Now, once the client receives the message, it uses the server's public key as an input to Diffie-Hellman key calculation, in addition to its own Diffie-Hellman private and public keys to compute the uh, secret key. Once the secret key is calculated, then the client generates the, uh, the exchange hash from the same inputs as the server. So the same hashing algorithm is going to be used and the same client identification string, uh, server's identification string, payload of client's key exchange initialization, payload of server's key exchange initialization, the server's public host key, the client's ephemeral public key, the server's public key, and the shared secret key are going to be input to this hash. Next, the client verifies the public key of the server. This is done by using a digital certificate sent by the server, if there was one, or a local database of public keys. If neither of these exist, meaning there is no digital certificate signed by a certification authority, nor is a local database of the server's public key, then it's up to the client to go ahead with accepting the public key, since the client is allowed to accept the key without verification. So when you SSH to a server, if you see any of these warning messages, that means neither of the verification method existed. So the top message that you can see comes from my PuTTY and the bottom one is the SSH that I use on my Linux machine to SSH to another Linux machine. Now, if you answer yes to these warnings, that means you are accepting the public key of the server. That means you're trusting that public key of the server. Now, the client uses that public key to decrypt the hash that was sent by the server and compares it with the one that it created earlier in the process. If these hashes are the same, then the server has been authenticated. 
Now for the future communications, the server and the client are not going to use the shared secret key that was created by the Diffie-Hellman algorithm. Instead, they are using that key as a base to derive six new keys. Two keys for encryption from server to client and client to server. Two initialization vector keys for server to client and vice versa. These keys are random numbers that are usually added as input to symmetric algorithm just to make the algorithm more secure and uh, make it more difficult to break the ciphertext. And two for the integrity from server to client and client to server. The end of key exchange is signaled by the exchange of SSH message new keys message, informing each other that uh, all future messages are encrypted using these new keys. And if we look at our Wireshark, here are these messages in Wireshark. You can see on the server here, right at the end of this key exchange reply, uh, DFLman key exchange reply, I have new keys. If I close this one right down here, I have SSH version 2. And you can see here message code new keys. And then right after that, I have this SSH message new keys uh, from client to server. So that's, let me close this one so that uh, we don't have too many things open. And here I have these new keys that was sent from client to server. The final step is service request. So the client sends an SSH message service request packet to request for the user authentication from the server. And then the server responds back with SSH message service accept. And that's how the secure session gets established. And client can provide the credentials to log into the server through this encrypted channel. So that's it for SSH protocol. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video.